Okay, everyone, let's take a look at our fetch because we can do so much more with fetch than just fetch data. We can also use the fetch state of pending and the fetch state of error. Let's have a look. So in the Nooks documentation, in the guides book under features book data fetching, you can see we have an example here. So we're using if the fetch state is pending, that means if we're waiting for our API to give us what we've asked for, we're, we're waiting, we're pending, so we can just write a message, fetching mountains or loading or whatever you want. And if it's trying to fetch the data and it encounters an error, then it can basically print out a message to the user saying an error occurred or we couldn't fetch the data or whatever. And then else we just get what we want. So let's take this example from the documentation. So you can copy that exactly as it is. And let's go to our, um, our page that we call products. So we created this the last day um, in the fetch video, if you've seen that. And basically what we have is a product car that's printing out a load of mountains. Just to give you a quick view, pretty much looks like this, right? So this is basically what we're doing. We're going from the home page, we're clicking products and it's getting the products, right? And you can see how there was a little kind of delay going on there um, while we were waiting for that to kind of come in. So we're gonna show a message uh, while we're waiting. So just above the actual component, we're gonna add if the fetch state is pending, fetching mountains, else the error. And then we'll just add a V else in here. So we get our uh, component. So that's basically all we need to do here. And now we go into our application. You, you probably saw that really, really quickly, but let's just, um, let's just slow down our internet a little bit. So let's go to our network tab and we can click on say slow 3G, for example. So now we go to the home page and we click on products. You can now see we are fetching the mountains, right? So as you saw what's happening with fetch and the difference between fetch and async data is that fetch um, will show everything else on the page except the API call while it's fetching, right? So you've got everything else is rendered. Whereas async data will not show you anything on the page until it's received all the data. So it happens like first, right? So you get everything all at once. With fetch, you can show that page. So you can show that we've got the mountains, we've got home, we've got a loading state. And then once we've got it, it's gonna fetch everything else. Now the images are taking a little bit longer because they're coming from a URL as opposed to um, in a static folder, for example. So that's why they're slowing down. So let's just, we can just turn that off there. So that's basically um, how that works, right? So we also, as you saw in the documentation, we had an error message, right? So you can see it here, fetch state dot error. So if there's an error, very simple, let's just delete a call to our API. So if we have no call to an API, we're obviously not going to get any data. So we're going to get an error. Now we'll first try and fetch it and it will go fetching mountains and then it will give you that error. So we can just click on the home button and you can see very fast fetching mountains error occurred, right? It's fetching it, it kind of just went, no, 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 nothing there and it shows an error. So that's kind of uh, really cool, but obviously we want um, to fetch data. So let's just put our API call back in there. So another thing we can do is, as you can see in the documentation, we have this button here with an at click method calling dollar fetch. Now, there's nothing else down here, right, in um, in the script tag because this is a, it's a method that's already set up for you. So you don't need to do anything. You don't need to register it. So we can use it directly just by copying this directly. And we'll just go back here and we're gonna paste it in. So let's put it above here so we can kind of see it, right? So we're gonna basically refresh our data. So what we're doing here is we have our home button and then we have our refresh. So what refresh is gonna do, it's gonna fetch our mountains again, and it's gonna refresh all the data. But as you can see, we did not refresh the page. Um, just again, to show you um, in a slow network environment, let's go to our lovely slow 3G. Oh my God, do you remember those days when we had slow 3G? Some people still do, I pity you people, sorry. Okay, so we're on the home page. we're gonna to go to our products, we're fetching our mountains, as you can see, we get our data. Now we're gonna refresh it. So as we're refreshing it again, you can see we're fetching our mountains again and we're getting our data again. And that's basically how that works. So in order to, to basically refresh, all we've done is added a click method with dollar fetch 
and that's going to refresh your data. So that's going to make that call to that API again and refresh everything on the page. So yeah, that's kind of uh, pretty cool. So you've got fetch state pending, fetch state error, and you can refresh with fetch. Really cool, isn't it? Have fun and keep fetching your data with Next.